submarine thrust belts. These are important components of the structure of many continental margins. And they're not just found above subduction zones, but also at the toes of huge gravitationally collapsing sediment prisms, vast submarine landslides. Seismic imaging is revealing the structure of these thrust belts, commonly with greater clarity than their subaerial continental counterparts on the edge of mountain belts. But still, uncertainty remains. What can we learn by comparing the structure of in situ subsurface examples with analogues found at outcrop in the geological record? This is the story about two thrust zones, one here in southeast France in the French Alps and the other in the subsurface from offshore Borneo. Now, thrusts are important parts of interpretations for many deep water settings like deep water Nigeria and offshore Namibia. So we're going to look at the nature of thrust zones on a sub seismic scale. What is the structure of a thrust zone in deep water rocks? So let's start off here in the French Alps and look at that structure, the palastra thrust. The deformation here affects a deep pile of deep water sandstones, turbidites, thick sand layers interbedded with thick fine grain units or shale, simplified in this cartoon. They lie upon a substrate of limestones and much older Jurassic shales. So that's the starting material. So we have thrusting of a very coarse multi-layer and it's that we'll see that is really critical in forming the structure of the fault zone itself. So let's annotate on the structure. From this distance we can get an idea of the scale of the hillside. It's around 800 metres high, a natural cross-section. The low ground are these older Jurassic shales overlain by a limestone layer and then a succession of turbidites. I've coloured in the foot wall to a thrust and here's the hanging wall and here's the thrust. We've got a classic foot wall ramp and from back here it all looks fairly simple but let's go up above the tree line to around where that top thrust arrow is. So up from this angle, you get a different perspective on the palastra thrust. Let's just annotate up the photograph. So here's our hillside and the palastra thrust comes in on the right of view about halfway up that cliff. Now there's another thrust on top of the hill, but we're not really interested in that today. Let's build the palastra thrust zone. Here's the highest thick sandstone unit in the foot wall, overlain in turn by a thick unit of thin bedded dark siltstones. Now the hanging wall, a complex body of sandstone which breaks out into a series of sand slices carried on individual thrusts. So there's a slice of sand brought up from the foot wall and entrained up along the main thrust plane, brought up against those uh, dark, thinly bedded siltstones. This complexity in thrust zone architecture is a direct reflection of complex fault localization in a multi-layer, where different competent sand units vary their localization behavior. With increasing strain and displacement, fault segments link up leading to arrays of sand slices. Sand is effectively entrained along the thrust zone. 
There's another example a few kilometres along from the plaster thrust. Complex thrust stones through distinct sand layers, coloured up here in yellow and orange, with a slice of sand between them. These behaviours increase the probability of sand-on-sand -sand juxtaposition, which also increases the probability of transmissibility of fluids across the thrust zone, compared to that for a single fault strand. So the act of sand entrainment along the thrust increases the chance of sand on sand connectivity across the thrust plane. OK, so much for the outcrop here in the French Alps. Let's go off to the subsurface in Saba offshore Borneo. The subsurface example was part of Yuki Totake's PhD studies that we wrote up together a few years ago. This seismic profile is about 10 times bigger than the Alpine example. We can trace out some stratigraphic units and identify the thrust zone, which initially looks to be pretty simple. But look here. There's a bright seismic anomaly patch in the middle of the thrust zone. And this has been drilled. Here's what was found with the seismic response. The gamma ray log kicks to lows, so more sand than mud rocks, with high resistivity, so little connected water in the pore spaces. And that porosity is occluded because this part of the well rings with a higher than expected seismic velocity. And it's the cuttings from the well that give the story. The layer is of sandstone, but the porosity is cemented by carbonates. So this was once a pathway of enhanced fluid transmissibility that brought in the carbonate that furred up the porosity, creating the final tight sandstone. And it's this that creates the bright amplitude anomaly on the thrust zone, entrained, then cemented sandstone, schematized like this. It's the complex thrust zone localization, creating slices of sand carried along the thrust zone that makes for complex thrust zone architecture and anomalous fluid transmissibility. So that's a quick look at sand shear and entrainment along thrust plates. So these two studies were published in a pair of papers almost 15 years apart. One for the French Alps, one for the subsurface. You can check them out, they're available online. I hope you've enjoyed the show, I hope you enjoyed the papers.